every single one of the realtors should volunteer at some point in time at something. If it's not national level, if it's not state, work in your own community, your own hometown. Because everybody contribute a little bit of something will make a huge difference. Welcome to Own It. Today we're joined by Amy Kong, the co-founder of Trust Real Estate and former national president of ARIA. Having immigrated to the U.S. herself, Amy understands firsthand the challenges immigrants can face when buying a home and has been a fierce advocate for immigrant rights and fair housing. We'll talk about her no-nonsense approach to fighting discrimination, why trust is key in real estate, and how to handle tough clients. Let's jump right in. I'm Hillary Saunders, joined by my co-host Spencer Kroll, who is equally as passionate as I am for homeownership and making fair housing a front and center issue. Our wonderful guest is a dear friend of mine, Amy Kong, and she is the co-founder of Trust Real Estate up in the San Francisco Bay Area. And the reason why I was talking about homeownership and passion is because I don't know anyone who has more passion than I do, except for you for this topic. So welcome to Ona Amy. Thank you so much for having me. And it's nice seeing Spencer here It's as always well. nice seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really want to just dive right into homeownership, fair housing, and your passion for it. Because we can get down the laundry list of accolades and positions that you've taken of leadership. But where does that where does that passion come from for this particular topic? Well, I guess um, uh, it comes from my early time here in the U.S. I'm an immigrant from Hong Kong, right? And uh, my slogan is Amy Kong from Hong Kong. My brother is King <laughs> Kong. And people, oh, really? But uh, the thing is, like, I'm an immigrant, right? So English is not my first language. It's not my mother tongue. Cantonese is. So when I first came to America, I thought, oh, my English is okay because, uh, you know, Hong Kong folks speak English mm-hmm. as well. But uh, when I first uh, landed in Houston, Texas, the next month, um, I went into a department store and I tried to buy a facial mask, right? So keep myself beautiful. Uh, nobody understand what I was trying to ask for and said, it's a facial mask. And they said, oh, mask. Mm. <laughs> oh. So that really hurt my self-confidence, right? Just kidding. But um, when I throw into uh, a real estate office, work as like a front desk, property manager, and later on I earn, you know, like, learn how to do mortgage and then real estate. When I'm in that position, I see that a lot of people are trying to take advantage or disrespect people mm. or with really short patience with people that don't really speak perfect English. Oh, interesting. Especially when I see people are taking advantage of our elderly landlord that don't speak the language, it really makes me mad. And at the end of the day, you know, little that I know that I started to become the bridge between them. So I, I will just stand up for them and I'll speak up for them. And I don't care, you know, if you're disrespectful, I just hang up on you, period. Right. So later on the day, uh, when I started to run my own business, I encountered uh, Mr. John Wong when I was taking my CRB class. Mm-hmm. At the time, I was like, huh, I've never been in China, mainland China. So I took a CRB class in Shanghai, <laughs> and oh. I met John Wong. He, he's supposed to be the instructor, but of course he was late. So um, so ended up somebody taught. And at the same time, it's like funny, the translator keep translating the numbers wrong. So mm. the students were all confused at the CRB class. And, and, and again, I become the bridge again, you know, to translate. So when I met John Wong, uh, long story short, is that he bring me to uh, organize real estate, like uh, the Chinese Real Estate Association in mm. San Francisco. So I started to volunteer myself. And then from time to time, they would put me on stage, which scared the hell out of me. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you would not know that now. You are so eloquent when you tell your story on stage. Every time that I've seen you speak, it is very inspiring. Right? But you cannot believe back then, I was like shaking. I'm like, no, 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 somebody else, somebody else. But when you are forced to be on stage, you learn and then you pay more attention on other people and learn from it. So... Yeah, and then I got involved and I learned a little bit more about the challenges about the AAPI's homeownership opportunity. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different discriminations going on. Unfortunately, the battle is still continuing, right? So uh, I I feel like, okay, if I can do something, I volunteer myself. 
So that's the reason why I get involved with the ARIA down the road and mm -hmm. become the national president in 2021. Uh, at first, I was like, uh-oh, lockdown. What can I do? <laughs> you had the toughest, I will say, the toughest and most creative year of leadership. Can, can we explain what Aria is yes, first? Yes, please by the do. Way? Because, well, I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you describe it. <laughs> okay, because... now you're at, uh, learning an acronym, right? Yeah. Asian Real Estate Association of America. Yeah. No, I knew what it stood for. I just rather have you say it. Just Thank don't, you. don't quiz me on that now. <laughs> so, Amy, you have a really cool perspective that I'd love to get your take on, given that you were the 2021 ARIA National President and you have been involved in ARIA and NAR and on a national level advocating for a lot of different things. Where do you see the current real estate industry in the U.S. and what are the problems or troubles that the call it the immigrant community is facing mm -hmm. well i guess uh you know we are dealing with the nar settlement right big mm -hmm. time there is a lot of conversation started the community might be getting well i shouldn't say might be they are getting a lot of misinformation oh, yeah. right and of course you know we asian are very creative and then we interpret those answers like oh so now I don't have to pay agents. Mm. Oh, you guys will work for free. And okay, so I'm like, mm. <laughs> no, that's not true. So um, good thing recently I have like a couple of the listing appointments and then I talk to sellers and none of the seller ever have any uh, objection about, you know, including maybe two and a half apple to the other side mm -hmm. so as to bring in more attention to their property. And uh, everybody signed the same thing like before. And when I'm talking to buyer, uh, for some reason, I don't know if that's true. Christina is my transaction coordinator. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, I'm so glad that you have a buyer broker agreement signed. You are the very first. <laughs> Well, bravo, well, you I'm get a gold I'm star. I, I, I'm I not will... sure if I'm the very first one, but I get them signed. Yeah. yeah. And I explain to them what's going on. And I said, hey, if you go to a new development, you know, if they only pay me two, don't worry about it. I'm not going to charge you two and a half, mm -hmm. right? But uh, if it's like a resale, there is a lot more work. I definitely will uphold to that. Whatever that is like exceeding three, uh, two and a half, it's to your credit. Yeah, what's wonderful is that you, you, in the way you just said that, you said it with confidence, you uh, you know your value. Oh yeah. So wow, well, I love it there too. No, so <laughs> I'm sorry. now now I'm frightened of you. No, but but uh, how long did it take you to establish that? Is that something you already you always had? Did you I fake it or did you? No, maybe it's in my blood. Well, no, I mean, no, I mean, but did you? But did, from day one, I mean, I remember the first time ever when I, I was at a listing and they said, "Well, if you represent the buyer as well, we want to lower your commission," mm -hmm. and and I remember the first time actually believing, "No, no, you're not going to do that because I'm worth it for the full commission." Mm -hmm. But I remember that moment. Do you have a moment like that? Or did you always, you just always felt like, yeah, I'm doing this and I Well, I number one, this. nobody will work, will work for free. Right. Right? And I hate it for the fact that after my work is completed, mm -hmm. at the signing table, you ask me to give you a pair of washer and dryer for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, if you go to work and after you completed the project, would your manager come back and say, hey, are you taking a discount on your salary? Right. What would you do? Same thing, same thing, you know, it's a complete disrespect. If you don't have respect on my profession, feel free to hire somebody else. Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that says a lot, though. And I think with the seasoned professional, you definitely don't want to work with people who don't value you or respect you. You know, what's interesting is I'm reading or I'm listening to a thread of trust of gaining trust and building trust and ultimately you know your company is called trust which i love i think it a lot of what you talk to is you gain the trust through experience and then you help your clients and you become their huge advocate i would love to hear from your perspective the immigrants that you work with or even if it's you know young couples who are trying to buy their first homes are at a disadvantage and how do you garner that trust with them and then bridge that to get them into their homes? Well, that's the reason why I guess when I first joined uh, Partner Reside, mm -hmm. uh, there is a lady really nice and tried to help me put together the bio and try to figure out, you know, what, what name should we have? And then I share with her, I've never advertised. I guess 
luckily we were locked down, so she was not face to face with me. Otherwise, she would slap on my face. Would <laughs> <laughs> with a broker be like a a secret agent, right? Right. <laughs> But it is just because I treat every single one of the client like my own, every single one of the transaction like my own. So I pay really great attention to it, and then that kind of customer service share with other people. So I got referrals. So I've never advertised. So, uh, but then the thing is, like, because of that, that kind of trust build up. Yeah. So uh, even though today I still got calls from my past clients, you know, their daughters or their sons wanted to buy. So um, we start the conversation. Even you, you know how the new generation is, right? I'm older, so that's why I said newer generation. <coughs> um, they thought that they know the whole world, right? Oh, so sure. they don't really need a realtor. But when we started to have a fair conversation, understanding what their needs and wants, and guide them through. They value, and then they started to trust on my opinion. Right. Yeah. So that's the reason why when we start partner, uh, we were like, oh, we wanted to name our company Trust Real Estate because <laughs> it reflect how we handle our client and also our agent. And then I remember people were like, oh, that would be difficult to get it approved because people would think about trust, you know, living trust. Oh, right. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. <clears throat> True. But, we were like, no, nope, that's what we want. Yeah, Let's move forward. <laughs> and you did it, and you've done a great job. So, so a question for you: when you when you're dealing with with a lot of these first time buyers, your your clients, you know, repeat business or whatever, mm. are they ever surprised? Because you were talking about hurdles that there still are still are hurdles in the API community yes. in terms of are they surprised sometimes of, of bias or anything like that, or, or or what the hurdles are? They are not surprised. They're frustrated. Okay, T tell me, I mean, give me the difference. Uh, surprise means that people don't know and now they realize, mm -hmm. right? But frustrated is that they knew it for a fact that there is something like that, but it's still happening. Yeah. That's frustrating. Uh, but so they've experienced it before then. They have heard from different people. Okay. Right. That, so now yeah. they're experiencing it for the first time. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. How do you coach your agents? Because as a newer agent, that is really hard to overcome because mm -hmm. normally you're just wanting the paycheck. Yeah. I mean, you don't have another income to go back to usually. So how do you coach and tell the next generation to really value themselves? Well, by the I, guess way, I, I think it's with current, I think it's with experienced agents too, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think so. No, I, I don't one think it's thing just is agents, definitely yeah. know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you are not sure, if you don't know what a 1031 exchange is, make sure you learned it. Mm -hmm. Make sure you ask all kinds of questions. You understand the inside out of it. Right? They're always your broker in the office. Otherwise, why are you splitting commission with your broker? I, I, I don't get it. Right? Or your team member. You know, make sure you equip yourself well. Um, I don't know if you have, uh, uh, if you know uh, Dollar Amo. Mm -mm. Ding Dong, a Japanese character cartoon. No. He has a little big pocket, a very cute character with a big pocket. Whatever the master wants, he always have a tool out. To fulfill the master's yeah. wish. Sure. So I always share this with my agent. I said, you wanted to be one of those ding dong, mm -hmm. right? With all your tools in your pocket. Everybody comes in differently. Everybody needs a difference. But if you're equipping yourself with all the tools, you just pick it up. Your confidence is right there because you have a solution for them. Right. Right? Or if you don't have the solution like tax or legal thing, mm -hmm. you have attorneys that sure. you work with and these people will pick up the call. Yeah, right? I, I think I think agents are always afraid to say, I don't know. I, I, and you know what? That's the first thing that I learned in law school is when you don't know, you raise your hand, you say, I don't know, but I'm going to find out for well, you. That's, yeah, exactly. That's the way to get clients. And by yeah. the way, what's great, like you're at a party and someone says, what's going on in this area for investment properties? I don't know. Let me get back to you on that. And yes, now you yeah. have, you know, and you have a reason to follow yeah. up and, and you better follow up. Yeah, honestly, if you do that, your client will feel like you care about that question. Mm -hmm. You care about their concerns. Right, right. Yeah. So... Get yourself equipped, and then when you're dealing with people, if these people are not really willing to work with you and think that you're the one to follow them instead of you leading them, that's not your client. Right. What do you, so a while back, um, I remember Aria was a, a big proponent of saving the opportunity for home ownership for foreign nationals in Florida, mm -hmm. that lawsuit that mm -hmm. happened and I think it, it might have pre 
post dated your tenure as president and came after, right? But what, I, since you know quite a bit about it, what is the current state of that? Do you know? <laughs> I'm curious. Um, I don't have the most current update, mm -hmm. but as of like in Mar uh, in May when we were in Washington D.C., Aria put together a press conference and really announced to the world that we can't stand it. This is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So let's and take a step back and share what the the underlying um, issue is. Well, uh, if you um, if you look back in the, uh, maybe like a year or something, it's not long ago, um, John Tester is the congressman. Mm -hmm. Montana. Okay. There is a group of people that purchase land, agricultural land surrounding a major military base. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what triggered the uh, lawmakers attention. And then they found out that particular uh, entity that owned those farmlands are from the Chinese government. Okay, so they started to talk about homeland security. They will really need to put rules in place. But unfortunately, that particular uh, proposal was too broad that covers everybody. So at, at the end of the day, it brought to our attention, uh, not really us, but NAR attention. And then uh, one of our founder, John Wong, is the one that uh, take charge of that as well. We started to have a conversation with that particular congressman, and he was really nice. He was like, oh, I am not aware that it has a side effect on that. Mm -hmm. So fine, work with my staff, and then we can work it out, no problem. But because of that, all the other states in, <laughs> in the U.S. started to be like, oh, let me create my own. Actually, here in California, we have a law in place long time ago, and then was, it was passed anonymously, but good thing that uh, Governor Newsom vetoed that. So we don't have that to deal with. Mm -hmm. But in Florida, that's another extreme case that they were like even punishing realtor right. mm -hmm. that would represent uh, national, uh, foreign national in those particular countries, which put realtors in a really bad position. How would I know if that's the case? discrimination would definitely happen. Yeah. So think about it. If you have that, if you're in that state, you practice, you see me, you were just... <laughs> I'm not going to work right? with Amy. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> so and when people are prejudiced in some way about that, uh, and I think that's uh, obviously that's the bar for home ownership in a lot of things. It's mm -hmm. an, an immediate bias, mm -hmm. you know, against, and especially, you know, right now what's going on politically with, with China... And mm -hmm. whatnot, you know, it's it's an it's an extra target. Do you work with people from mainland China? Do you have a lot of clients from mainland China? I don't have a lot uh, because I don't speak Mandarin well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I work with a lot of people from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So a lot of mainland Chinese will go to Hong Kong and come over here. Yeah, I work with them. Do you find that it ha has it become more of an issue lately, or? Well, they are quite aware of that, and then they will ask question. Uh, oh, you know, is your stay? Uh, okay? open to that or things like that. Or sometimes they will have a negative impression about the U.S. government. Mm. So uh, they might not really want to come here. If they have a choice, they would rather go to Canada or some other place in the world. So as a uh, global folks, right, we naturally deal with a lot of uh, people from different country. We feel like, hey, why people have this kind of impression about the U.S. What is going on with our government to do that? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, forget about politics. You know, we, we yeah. don't want to talk about sure. that. But uh, when it comes to hurdle, another thing is the NAR settlement about the, uh, the apples that we are sharing, right? Mm -hmm. But if we don't have that kind of transparency um, on how many apples are we sharing, then, you know, it could easily fall into discrimination during a buy and sell transaction oh, yeah. without knowing. Mm -hmm. Right, right, which all goes back again to transparency and trust. And I right. really do love your stance on all of it. Before we end, Amy, I would love to just get your um, inspiration or tips for anyone listening who do want to make an impact in whatever community that they're involved in because you have given a lot of your time to leadership and have a long experience doing that. Do you have any tips and tricks for other people? Well, I think uh, everyone, every single one of the realtors should volunteer at some point in time mm. at something. If it's not national level, if it's not local, if it's not state, work in your own community, your own hometown. 
because everybody contribute a little bit of something will make a huge difference. I am not aware that when I involved with Aria, I have a voice. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of it, but now I realize it. I take advantage of it and I make good use of it and make sure the right message get across. And I'm hoping that these will inspire other people to really step up. In our industry, we are lucky because I tell you, the system that we have here in the US is basically a model. I led a Hong Kong and Macau train mission uh, back in 2015. And now I get involved with ARIA, uh, NAR Global. I have seen a lot of different country people are so envy about how our system works so well. But now it seems like people and outside are like turning things around and making this perfect system into something mm. that we would not be able to imagine how discrimination will come back. That's why at the beginning I said, this is a long battle. Yep. We don't want it to create an environment that bring ourselves down. Like earlier, I feel like a lot of the people were thinking, oh, NAR did a, a lousy job with this settlement. I'm gonna our business, I will have no business, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, I tell you, from what I have observed, is that our own realtor people are the one to bringing our industry down. Hmm. Hmm. Because if they don't know and they don't equip and then they don't take good opportunity about this entrepreneurship that with the most minimum cost to start, but do a good job to serve the community, yeah. that's what hurts. Yeah, I guess it's, I mean, two things there. I mean, I guess it's the good job, which is really important, but also I love what you just said about volunteering. I mean, there, there's passion. There, yes. There's the passion. Yeah, it is. It comes through. It comes through. Amy, well, we want to thank you so much for giving us your time and uh, a big shout out to Trust Real Estate because you guys do an amazing job. We will put their website in the show notes regardless. So if you do want to reach out to Amy, learn how you get involved with Aria or anything else. Yeah, exactly. Come to Aria. But Hillary, I really appreciate, you know, Spencer as well every week. Every now and then on a town hall, you give so much information and education that really help us equip ourselves and be there with confidence. So thank you so much You're for welcome. supporting all the women. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you, Amy. And we will see you on another episode of Own It. All right. Do not miss our next episode where we talk AI and digital marketing with Matthew Marks, the co-founder and CEO of Evocalize. It's absolutely incredible what they've built, a marketing platform that helps agents use AI to create and optimize their digital campaigns. Don't miss it.